Listen, I get it. You watch Tenet, I watch Tenet, and now we're both obsessed with this idea of reverse VFX, which, you know, they look cool, but unless you're using something like a moving camera, these things tend to be super easy to make. So let's talk about how to do, for example, something like this. Now, before we continue, I need you to let go of the notion that you can either play footage forwards or backwards. That's not true. You can actually play both, both forwards and backwards at the exact same time. For example, let's say that one version of me is dropping objects forwards in time and the other one is dropping objects kind of reversed in the other direction of time. Well, then we can have half the frame go forwards, half the frame go backwards, stitch them together. And now we've created a shot that somehow has both flowing directions of time where this is the simple case, meaning that these objects are going in different directions, but at no point do they interact, so there's nothing really confusing going on. But if I was to catch a battery like I did in the last shot while still talking forwards in time, how is something like that possible? Well, what you didn't see is before I even started talking, what I did is I dropped the battery going forwards in time. Then I began talking again, going forwards in time, but then pretended to catch the battery even though there was nothing there. And then if I was to take the footage from before, reverse it and composite everything together, well, then I've faked a interaction with objects going temporally different directions. And all that is well and good, but it is nowhere near as complex as taking an object and having it go forwards and then backwards and switching back and forth seamlessly somehow. I guess uh, we should talk about that. <laughs> So how is it that we cut between forwards time and reverse time seamlessly? Is it possible to jump cut between cause leads to effect and effect leads to cause? No, that's not possible unless you get super tricky. So in fact, what we do is get even trickier by doing some CG transitions that make it look like we're going back and forth when in reality, it's not what's actually happening. For example, in the battery shot, it looks like it's going forwards to reverse, but what's actually happening is I just jump cut. So the battery's already where it's supposed to be. And then I create a CG transition. It's a completely digital battery that takes us from one to the other. And this kind of thing looks complicated, but it really isn't. I did it for all the battery transitions and for the card transitions, when in reality, I just kind of threw a card forwards and acted out the rest. Well, the way we do this is we take a freeze frame on the first frame of the transition and also a freeze frame of where this battery is supposed to end up. We then open up Blender and align our camera so that the plane is resting on where the floor would be, align a cylinder so it's matching with the battery on the first frame, go a couple frames down and match it with the last frame of the the transition. Right now, this animation's looking pretty lame, so maybe add a bit of spin to make it look more believable, like this thing's actually being reversed. And the best part of this is at no point do we need to make a 3D battery with accurate textures, which is hard because this thing is super reflective. How do you even capture these textures? No, instead, what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a projection for the first frame of the cylinder. We're then gonna use a second UV map to make a projection of the last frame of the cylinder. So now we have the battery at its initial state and its final state. And then we can just make a simple transition that blends between the two, which normally wouldn't be the best thing to do, but since this thing's already in motion and there's motion blur and everything, the chances that you are going to notice this are exactly zero. In other words, what's actually happening here is the whole footage is always going forwards in time, but we do the CG transition, which looks like it's reverse VFX, but actually it's not, and we're just fooling all the dummies that think we're reversing the video. That's not what's happening here. Use this reverse VFX fakery to fool everybody, and I don't know. I've been CG Matter. You've been you. Bye bye so, you made it to the end of this tutorial, which would make it seem like the sponsor for this video, Skillshare, might be a perfect fit for you. What is Skillshare? Well, Skillshare is a online learning community with thousands of courses, including stuff like photography, filmmaking, 3D, including Blender particularly. So yeah, you can learn about Blender from Skillshare. One premium class in particular I want to recommend is Filmmaking from Home by Penny Lane, which is this idea of taking found footage and using that footage that you didn't film yourself to make your own movie because you don't necessarily need to be behind the camera to film, especially if you're not good behind the camera. Watch this course and other premium courses ad-free using the premium membership of Skillshare, which by the way is less than $10 a month, but I'm about to make the deal much sweeter, so listen up. For a limited time, you can use my link in the description to try a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership, so click that link if that is something you're interested in.